verse, chapter 29, Proverbs, and verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Let us pray. Father, we come here tonight, God, September, Lord, September 2021, God, the missions conference here at Antioch, Lord. Oh, I thank God there's a church way back in the book of Acts, God, named Antioch, where the disciples were called Christians first, God. Oh, in the day and hour in which we live, God, there's a lot of people that associate somebody being a Christian for just somebody that attends church, God. But we know we know that person's not just got to attend it, but God, they got to be a time they went by Calvary, a time that they met you personally, that they've been John 3 born, God. And I pray tonight as this service goes, God, I just pray your dear spirit to take charge of it, God. I pray he'll move in out of the avenues of your people's heart. I pray if there's someone here tonight, God, you start dealing with their heart, that they need you in their life, Lord. I pray they don't waste any time and get gloriously saved tonight, God, because that's what it's all about. It's not about me, God, but it's all about you. And Lord, I thank you. Thank you for what you did on Calvary for a lost and dying world, and that included me. And God, everyone in here tonight that's saved, God, that included them. And God, now just give me a backbone and a burning desire, God, to preach your word one more time for in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Hey, you can be seated. Hey, man, it's all right tonight, God. Where it's just us in here. Hey, man, oh, you ought to put a smile on your face. Hey, man, that verse of Scripture there, where there is no vision, the people perish. Hey, man, the people perish. What it's talking about right there tonight, hey, man, is, is the sermon of God's Word right there. Spiritual discernment of God's Word because the law in that Scripture is God's Word. That's what it's talking about right there tonight. I looked up that vision. When I first seen that vision, Pastor Purdue, I was thinking about when, when you look at somebody. But boy, it's amazing when you get into God's Word and dig. Strong's visions, visions, a sight, a dream, a revelation. Hey, we've got the revelation tonight for our lives in God's Word. Hey, man, 1828 Webster's. The vision in Scripture is a revelation from God, an appearance of an exhibition, exhibition of something supernaturally presented to the minds of the prophets by which they were informed of future events, such as were visions of Isaiah, Amos, and Ezekiel, etc. So we see visions or revelations from God. Amen. That's how God talked to his people back then, and them old prophets. Amen. And I started looking up some things in the Word of God. Amen. God used prophets, told the people what they needed to do, amen, especially when they were under the judgment of God, amen, and wanting God to come help them out a little bit. Over in Deuteronomy 18, 22, eight, chapter, <laughs> chapter 18, verse 22, it says here, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if a thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. In other words, when they said stuff that wasn't true, it didn't come to pass. You know this, phonies. Hey, man, I believe we've got a lot of phonies in the day and hour in which we live. Hey, man. But if that prophet had spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So when, the, when, when, when it come to pass, they know it's a real message from God. Hey, man. And now let me tell you something. Some of them old prophets back there. There's still some revelations that's going on right now. It's going to be fulfilled in our lifetime. And they're coming to pass. And I'm excited about that. Hey, man. Oh, vision with the Word of God. Where there is no Word of God, there's no message of life, folks. The people perish. Hey, man. I thought about our nation in that. I thought about our nations. They've been running the Word of God out for years, folks. Hey, man. They run out of our public schools. I believe it was back in 62. I'm not taking credit for that. I wasn't around then. Hey, man. Are you hearing me? Hey, they've been running out of government. Hey, man. The Word of God. Been running out of government. Hey, man. And our nation spiritually is in a sticking, pathetic mess. Hey, man. That's what the Lord laid on my heart, and that's what I wanted to say. Hey, man. And it is. You go in these facilities, I go into these kids, come out of homes, no God there, hey man, nothing about the Word of God, hey man, vision in Scripture, hey man, the sermon of the Word, where there is no vision, the people perish, oh my, are you hearing me? Number one, hey man, and I've just got five little things here, and I'll preach quick, hey y'all will be glad I'm a prison preacher, because i got to get it in quick, hey man, I'll try to slow down a little bit. If I get too fast back there, kids, just say, hey, slow down a little bit. Hey, man, hey, man, where there is no vision, the people perish. We need to have a fresh vision, hallelujah, of lost souls. Right. Hey, we do. And I believe y'all got it here tonight. Hey, man, 
I really do. I seen you board out there and all your support, and it just cranked my tractor. Hey, man, boy, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said right here, he said, all power is given unto me in the heaven and the earth. Jesus, folks, is our powerhouse. Hey, man, he's the one that made it possible for this missions conference. He's the one that makes it possible, hey, man, for us missionaries to go out there and reach a lost and dying world. He works through his people, and they take care of us, and we just keep on going. Hey, man, go you there, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. He didn't say I might be with you. He said, I am with you. Amen. All the way, even until the end of the world. So that great commission, we're to reach, hey man, teach, train, disciple. We're to reproduce our own kind. Boy, I don't know about you, but it sure winds me up when somebody says yes to Jesus. Whether it's in the juvenile facility or whether it's out on the street. Because I know now they're not going to an old awful place called hell. Hey man, are you near me tonight? The ones that have been saved, sealed, sanctified, secure. John 3, born again. Hey man, not no hope so, think so, or maybe so. Hey man, they've got it. Oh, I remember over in John 4, 35, Jesus told his disciples, Disciples after a woman at the well got in, folks. He said, Say not ye there, or yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are already white to harvest. Hey, man, oh, my, there's plenty out there. You could probably go from the stop sign out here to the next stop sign. And just in between those stop signs, find some lost people that need the Lord. Hey, man, boy, I tell you what, when I think about visions, think about visions. Oh, over there in Acts when those visions started, I believe it was over here in Acts 2.17. I won't read the whole scripture. That was a prophecy of Joel. Hey, man, when the day of Pentecost took off, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Now, that's when the last days started, preacher. The last days. Hey, man, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young man shall see visions, and your old man shall dream dreams. Hey, man, I'll tell you what, God don't give me no visions like that, preacher. But I know when he wants me to do something, he don't want me to do something. He wants me to turn left, or he wants me to turn right. And that God gives you a vision, hallelujah. But I want to tell you, that vision's got to line up with his word. If it doesn't line up with his word, this to me is our vision because it's the completed word of God. The book of Acts was a transitional time. The Word of God was being produced. Hey, man, it was coming on the scene. Hallelujah. We've got it now. And this old authorized 1611 King James. Hey, man, the visions. God gave some visions. One of my favorite soul winners. Hey, man, the Apostle Paul over there in Acts. Acts chapter 9, verse 3 and 6. He had his Damascus experience. And God gave him a vision. Hey, man, I believe he's seen the Lord of Shekinah glory. He says over in Corinthians, last of all, He'll see him a scene of me. Hey, man. Oh, I tell you what, Paul had a good vision right then. Hey, man, he got gloriously saved. Hey, man. Then God, over in Acts 13, 46 through 48, he gave God Paul's will for his life. He was to go after the Gentiles. Hey, man, is there, hey, I'm not a, I'm a Gentile. Hey, man, I don't believe there's any Jews in here tonight, are they? Hey, man, but they can get on board too and get saved. Hey, man, and I like to see them get in too. But in Acts 16, 9, if you'll turn there, I'm just going to go through a few things as I move on to the next point I have. Hey, man, oh, my. Acts 16, 9, there's a vision up here to Paul at the night. And there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Listen to this, come over to Macedonia and help us. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Oh, my. In verse 6, the Holy Ghost forbid Paul to preach the word in Asia. So Paul headed to Europe. Boy, I thank God that he went to Europe, folks. Hey, man. Hey, but listen to me. Come over to Macedonia and help us. What I think right there, preacher, and it's just me. I can't back it up with Bible. But I believe it was one of them prisoners over there in Philippi in that prison. That's where Paul ended up at. Hey, man. Hey, it could have been. I don't know. But Paul heard this cry. Hey, man, I think about that. We should hear that cry too. Hey, man, there's a lost and dying world out there saying, come on over and help us. Hey, man, I think about the juveniles. Come on over to North Carolina and help us. South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia to help us. Florida, Alabama, Mississippi. We've got one working on in West Virginia. They're crying up in West Virginia. Come on to West Virginia and help us. Hey, man, oh, man, they're saying nobody's preaching and teaching. 
it was about Jesus. Nobody shared a clear presentation of the gospel. Hey, man, they're saying, Brother Purdue, Jesus died for my soul too. Come on over and help us. Nobody will tell us. Hey, man, God's been run out of everything. Hey, man, boy, I'll tell you something. We was down in the Eastwood facility last month. We just got word we got another revival there before Christmas. Hallelujah. That's where that young man that got to lead to the Lord. Hey, man, glory, it was good. Young lady. I was in that night getting ready to preach the Tuesday night service. And, and just right before I started, the young man turned around and looked at the one in charge. And See, I can't tell about all this in the prior letters, but I can sure show you now. That young man, this is his exact words. He looked at that lady in charge. He said, will you let these Rock of Ages men of God come back and preach to us some more? I need, this is his exact words, I need the preaching of the Word of God. I need to hear the Word of God. Boy, when he turned back around, that lady went like this. That's what she did. She went, hey, because she knows what's helping them. Social programs won't do no good without Jesus. They'll, 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 do, them, they'll do them, but when God of glory moves in, he'll make the difference. Hey, man, he'll make the difference. Oh, he's been right there. Oh, in South Carolina where I'll be headed back Thursday. Not long ago, I walked, was doing our cell-to-cell visitation. We went out there, the ones that were out in the facility, I preached to them that night, and I noticed one there, Brother Ken. I looked right at her. She remembered me. I said, you was in the service last night. She said, yes, I was, and I enjoyed the message. So me, my director was right there. I wasn't in there by myself. I said, by the way, how are you with the Lord? What's wrong with saying that to people nowadays? I want to know if there's John 3 born and ready to meet God. Hey, man, if we do more of that, there'd be a lot more saved people. Hey, man, are you hearing me tonight? And she said, I'm working on it. And, hey, she was serious. And I didn't slam her or beat up on her. I know you can't get to heaven by works. It's by grace are you saved through faith in Jesus. Hey, man, the thief on the cross settled that for everybody to look at it. But that lady, I said, do you, how long are you going to be here? She said, I got an hour. I said, can I tell you how I got Jesus in my life? She said, I'd like to hear that. Just share my testimony. God gave her a long version. Before I got done, tears running down her eyes. She said, Preacher, I believe Jesus, Son of God. I believe he died on that cross for my sin. I believe he was raised for the third day. I really do. I said, I believe you. I said, the devils and demons believe too, according to James. Look where they're at. I said, what I'm asking you, what God's trying to ask you is, is have you told him that? And it's like a light bulb went off. I took that word of God. I let her read the salvation scriptures herself. That young lady got saved. Hallelujah. It was good. And, and then I asked her if she had her own Bible. And this is what she said. This is a new convert. Hadn't been to Bible college. Hadn't read through the Word of God and things like that. She said, well, I've got a Bible that's not the Word of God. I said, well, I said, well, kind of explain that to me. She said, I believe that King James Version there, you preaching out of the Word of God. Boy, I about come unglued. Hey, man, I got her King James Bible. Hey, man, oh, my. Oh, my, and it's good because, hey, that's what's going to feed the soul and feed the spirit. I believe that Bible's alive just like the New Testament church is alive. Hey, man, are you hearing me tonight? Oh, my, where am I at? I'm losing my places right now. I'll tell you what, there's others we take to the facilities. We take that old King James Bible to those facilities. Hey, bring us, bring us that old KJV. Our souls are starving. They need fed. Hey, man, I know some groups go in there and take other versions. But boy, when the inmates are declaring they want the Word of God, hey, man, we get the Word of God to them. Hey, man, you got missionaries out there on the wall right now. And they're saying, oh, they're saying, oh, they're saying, come on over into Mexico and help us. We need the Lord. We need somebody to teach us, to talk to us. Hey, man, we're perishing over here. They're saying, come on. Come on over here to Canada. Come on out here to Midwest. Come on up here to the New England states. Come on out here to Africa, South America. The cries all over the world, folks. Eight billion people. Hey, man. And how many people out of them eight billion you think know the Lord? You say we can't get to them all whole, but we can do what we're supposed to do for the Lord. That was his commission he gave us. It wasn't a suggestion. He didn't say go reach a few hundred thousand or a few million and quit. He said you keep on going until I come back. Hey, man, oh, my, if we'll get that in our heart and soul, it'll be good. In Acts 16, as Paul obeyed, hey, man, God let him on carrot and counter there in verse 14, a woman named Lydia, a seller of purple. That, that was money right there. Hey, man, and Thyatira, which worshiped God. She was worshiping God, Pastor Ken. 
but she needed somebody to tell her who to worship. Hey, man, oh, she didn't know Jesus right there. But look right there. It says, whose heart the Lord opened. That was our first European convert. And that's why you and I got the gospel over here. Hey, man, it was for old Lydia. Hey, man, who knows where we'd be at in this country. Hey, man, verse 16 through 19 the Holy Ghost allowed Paul to encounter that demon-possessed slave girl. I call her the California psychic hotline. Amen. Them old, them old boys was making some money off of her. And God help them people that are making money and abusing our children in all kinds of ways. You go in them prisons with me, I run in the boys and girls being used by their parents, used in prostitution, used in things that I'm not going to mention because there's kids in here. But I'll tell you what, when the Holy Ghost breaks them down, they get over that bitterness and get saved. Hey, man, but I'll just tell you this right here. The Word of God, Jesus, hey, he lets you know it's going to be hard on some people if they don't get right with them for abusing kids. Hey, man, he said it'd be better a millstone hang about your neck and cast in the sea than harm one of these little ones. That millstone, he's talking, and I'm not talking about just physical, physical abuse. I'm talking about keeping them from the Word of God. I've run into people that don't want their kids to e e us even talk to them about the Lord and share the Word of God. I've run into that. That goes in there too, folks. Hey, man. Oh my, let's see where I'm at right here. He cast those demons out. It got Paul in the prison. He got beaten probably just an inch from life. Him and Paul and Silas, hey man, that inner prison. And a prison back then, what I understand, it was a prison. Their bathroom was where, the, where, where they were at. Oh, you know, it had lice, rats, the roaches, you name it. Hey man, it was a pleasant place. And I could just see Silas. Hey, what are we going to do now, Paul? We're just telling people about Jesus. And look what happened. And how Paul just says, hey, let's just sing praise unto God. He knew the God of glory that saved him on the road to Damascus. Well, the same God of glory is going to deliver him out of that situation. Hey, he knew that. Are oh, you hear me? God sent in verse 16 a divine earthquake. You say, how do you know it's divine? Well, things were built by rocks back then. And the rocks crumble when the earth quakes. There wasn't no rebar, folks. <laughs> All the shackles come off, the cell doors open. That was divine, hey, amen. When I thought about that, I thought, hey, what kind of earthquakes God going to have to send in your life to get you where you need to be with him? Hey, man, oh, I'm not trying to beat up. I'm trying to encourage you. That's a good thing if you live your life for the Lord. That's a better thing if you know him personally. Hey, man, tonight, don't let him send earthquakes in your life to get you where you need to be for him. Hey, man, are you hearing me? Those prisoners, hey, I believe they all got saved. Because they didn't leave. If I, if I was in there getting ready to get beheaded or in that nasty prison for a number of years, I believe I'd have skedaddled. But they knew they'd done the crime. And I believe every one of them prisoners got gloriously saved. They knew, hey man, if they did get executed, they was going home to glory. Hey man, for a child of God, no matter what happens, if you're saved tonight, hey man, hey, when you step out in turn, that's our life forever. Hey man, we're just, we're just pilgrims traveling through. And listen, God did a real Romans 8, 28 for Paul. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are thee called according to his purpose. And in Philippians 1.12, I believe Paul was thinking about chapter 16 there when he wrote Philippians 1.12. But I would, ye she, ye she, uh, I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. Oh my, are you listening to me tonight? When you, hey, whatever you're going in your life, God's going to put people in your path to share him with. Hey, man, Paul went through beatings, hard hardships, reaching lost souls, weather, injuries, you name it. How's your vision tonight for lost souls? Hey, man, really? Hey, man, you say I'm not a preacher, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a missionary, or evangelist. If you're saved, hey, man, Acts 1-8, the Holy Ghost gave you power to witness. Hey, man, he didn't say you and I was going to raise the dead or heal the sick. Them days left when the apostles left. Hey, man, hey, God wants you to be a dynamite soul winner. Hey, man, have you shared your testimony with somebody today? Have you shared it with somebody last week? Have you shared it with somebody last month? Luke 16, 28 says, For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them that they also, that they also come into this place tormented. Hey, man, the rich man in the hell. He knew he was stuck there, and he was begging, begging old homeless Lazarus, begging Abraham, let him go tell his brothers about Jesus. Hey, man, tell them about the Lord. Are you hearing me tonight? Hey, man, are you hearing me? Oh, right now, hey, hey, you've got a testimony if you've been saved. Oh, my, and it's something, it's something that needs to be shared. 
Your family ought to know it. Hey, man, mom, hey, mom, you hear me back there? I'll slow down a little bit. Hey, man, hey, if I check out before you do, hey, you ain't going to have to wonder where I'm at, are you? I shared my testimony with you, hadn't I? That's how you ought to be with your family, folks. Your loved ones shouldn't have to wonder. Hey, where's so-and-so? I wonder where if he went up or went down. They ought to know where you went. Hey, man, if you love the Lord. Hey, man, it's not nothing to be ashamed of. Hey, right now, hey, there's people in hell bragging, bra uh, begging, begging people to share their testimony with their lost loved ones. There's dads, moms, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews. They're burning in that blaze in the furno. Hey, but they want you to go share your testimony to their loved ones that's still above ground. Hey, man, hey, your testimony was bought with a price. Jesus done a lot to buy that testimony for you folks. Hey, whether he saved you out of a wicked life like he did me, or he saved you from getting involved in things and kept you out of it, people need to hear about it. Hey, number two, and I'll hurry along. What time is it? Oh, it's how, how much time you want me to preach, preacher? Hey, good enough. Hey, man, I better... No, nah, I'll leave the jacket on. Where there's no vision, the people perish. We need to get a vision, folks, of the judgment seat of Christ. Hadn't heard that preached so much, preacher. Hey, man, let's turn over to Corinthians. Hey, man, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, we hear people talk a lot about, oh, about the great white throne judgment for the lost people. We need to look at the great, the, the judgment seat of Christ for the saved people. Hey, man, listen to me. It's not to judge your salvation. It was settled on Calvary. Hey, man, but when you get saved, it's how you live and serve the Lord. Hey, man, with the rest of your life. From the day you meet Jesus to the day you go home to him. In chapter 3, verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, your, how, how you live for the Lord is either going to be gold, silver, or precious stones, which will not burn up, or it's going to be wood, hay, or stubble when you live for yourself. Hey, Amen. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide when he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Listen to me. Know you not, verse 16, that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Hallelujah. That ought to make you want to live right, talk right, breathe right, and do everything right. Hey, man. Hey, I'm not talking about the slip ups and mess ups. Are you hearing me tonight? Oh, my. In Romans 14 10, it says, For we shall all stand before the judgment. Judgment seat of Christ. Or Paul's talking to the saved ones there in Rome, the saved Jews. Hey, man. Oh, my. Listen to me. How faithful saved people live and serve God. Salvation again is that free gift. But listen to me. God, the day you meet Jesus and the day you get saved, he's got a plan, purpose, and a path for your life. Hey, man. But so many people miss that, preacher. Oh, my. And I, I believe I missed a lot of it. But as I grew in the Lord and he slammed me, and put me back in line with him. Hey, man. Then one day at 49 years old, he decided to use me. And I praise the God of glory for that. I'd rather have been at 29. Hey, man. But I'll tell you what. God's got it. Hey, Paul the Apostle, he, he had his will for his life. I don't know what your will is, young people back there. Or you old oh, got some age on you like me. Hey, man. But listen to If you choose to live a rebellious life in the things of this world, hey, man, you're going to smell like smoke for all eternity. I believe that. Christians that straddle the fence, they probably won't have much to lay at the feet of Jesus. I'll tell you what, how, what he's done for me, dying for my sins so I'll never see a place called hell. I want to give him all I can give him. Hey, man, folks, are you hearing me? Uh, Christians, hey, God, hey, if Christians, if they wrong you, hey, don't go out there. Offend. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Hey, man. If Christians are cross you or anything, God's going to settle that right there at that judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Oh, my. And Ron, listen to me. If you're in a mindset as a Christian, I will do as I please. I will treat others as I choose. No one can make me do differently. Amen. That's the rebellion right there, folks. It's time for a John 1, 9 repentance. That's for the Christians. If we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. What can I do, preacher, from here on out? 
If, if you not, if you not lived your life for the Lord like you ought to, and you want to change direction now, hey man, just please God in all things. Do right in all things. Be sure that God's pleased with how you're living, how you're walking, how you're talking, and how you're treating others. Hey, man, are you hearing me today? Oh, my. That day of your salvation on. See, Malachi, God's not going to forget how you live, folks. Malachi 3.16, that's the book of remembrance. They that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. You get that fear of God back in your life, you'll live right for him. Hey, man, oh, my, if you meet the Lord before the next sunrise, and I hope all of you, I hope all of you go up in the rapture. Hey, man, but if you met the Lord before the next sunrise, Psalm 90, verse 9, the last part of that verse, that's a Psalm of Moses. <laughs> he says, we spend our years as a tale that is told. What's the tale of your life going to be? Hey, man, number three, where there is no vision, the people perish. We need to get a vision back in our lives of the horrors of hell. Hey, man. Oh, if you're saved and been John 3 born tonight, you'll never smell it. You'll never see it. Hey, man. Oh, isn't that good? Isn't that good, that order encouraging tonight? But the people that live a Christless life and die a Christless death, they'll go to a Christless hell, folks. I say, hey, we're out there trying to reach and give the gospel. Not everybody wants Jesus. But boy, I sure like it when they come by that way. That heart's done being prepared and the Holy Ghost worked on it. And they want that peace that surpasses all understanding. And to get gloriously saved. Hey, man, from hell they'll go to the great white throne judgment. I won't read all those verses, but Revelation chapter 20, verse 10 through 15, that's the final courtroom date for the unsaved. Hey, man, half their name is the last verse, not recorded in the book of life, they're thrown in the lake of fire. And let me say, you don't want that to happen to you. You don't want that to happen to your loved ones. Hey, man, Jesus spoke and preached on hell more than he did heaven. Right now, where is hell? Have you ever wondered that? Hey, man, Isaiah 5, 14 says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. That means there will always be room, Brother Ken. It's never going to run out of room to receive somebody. Oh, my. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. So I believe hell's under. I believe it's in the heart of the earth. Hey, man. Oh, my. Uh, Luke 16, 23 says, And hell he lift up his eyes, so he was looking up. Oh, Proverbs 15, 24, that he may depart from hell beneath. So hell is beneath us, folks. Oh, my. Oh, and if you die without Jesus, that's a meeting. The last breath and last heartbeat, that's where you'll spend, hey, until you're pulled out to the great white throne, folks. Hey, listen, every mom, every woman, every man, every mom, every man, every, every woman, not mom, I'm getting tongue-tied here, let me slow down. Every man, every woman, every child under that age of accountability, you say, what are you talking about? Some children, hey, if God's dealt with your heart back there, young people, if you know you need to be saved, you're accountable. Hey, some kids, it's older, because why? They hadn't had experience the things of God. Uh, they've been deprived of that. I don't know what the age of accountability is, but young people, I don't know your heart. I'm not trying to be mean or ugly. Hey, I see young people die all the time. This week in Wilkes County, there was a 14-year-old girl that OD'd. You realize that she sat back there and heard a presentation of the gospel, and God, the Holy Ghost, hey, knows her heart. You know where she's at for all eternity? Hey, that's right. I was in the missions conference in Durham a while back. This is a true story. I'm not going to use names. A mom and her 14-year-old daughter were attending the church regularly. And then it, she started, the word was, she started messing with drugs at the school. Well, the pastor didn't deal with that because it was hearsay. And, uh, but her, her clothes got less and less, so he finally had to address that. So he called the mom in and the daughter, and it was nice. He let them know he was glad they were attending and wanted them to keep attending. He said, but ma'am, you're going to have to put some more clothes on your daughter. Hey, he's doing what he was supposed to do. Hey, man, she blew up. Don't tell me how to raise my child. We're not coming back here again. Three nights later, about 2 a.m. in the morning, that phone rang to the pastor. He answered it. She said, my baby's in hell. My baby's in hell. She's died. She said, no, no. That, that come at the funeral. He said, my baby, she said, my baby's dead. My baby's dead. She od She didn't make it. She didn't make it to the hospital. Will you preach the funeral? Whenever the funeral was going, they said that pastor said five people had to pull her off that casket to roll it out the door. 
And she says, it's going out the door. She said, my baby's in hell because I didn't point her to Jesus. That was out of her Zach mouth screaming. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, I, hey, parents. Hey, you ought to be leading your children to the Lord. Hey, man. And not the things of this world. Oh, my. Listen to me. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. God does not. Hey, God don't send people to hell. They send themselves. He gave the way out through his son, Jesus Christ, and faith in him. Hey, man, I hear that all the time. Why does God do this? Why does God do that? Why is this happening and that happening? It's because of S-I-N. God knew all that was going to come to pass. He gave his way out. He gave the ultimate gift. Hey, man, all you have to do is come to Jesus. Hey, man, oh, it's not going to make this world get any better. Hey, man, but it's going to get you prepared to live in it. Hey, man, it's going to get you prepared to head out of here one day. Oh, my, listen to me. If you refuse Christ, God has no choice. Hell's a burning, blazing, burning, inferno that lost people go to the moment they die. I seen Brother Adam's name out there, and I wrote Brother Adam's down here. Ain't that something? Hey, old Brother Adam's a good friend of mine. I hear him preach a lot on hell. He said there's a lot of people looking good, looking good all the way to hell. Hey, man. And this, this is what he says. He says, there'll never be a sunrise in hell. He said, a child will never say I love you. A spouse will never say I love you to each other because there's no love in hell. Hey, man, it's fire, outer darkness, and gnashing of teeth. Hey, man, oh, my, you think about that tonight. If God's dealing with you, if you don't know, you're ready to meet them. You can make sure of that tonight. Number four, where there is no vision, the people perish. But that he that keepeth law, happy is he. We need a vision of the church. Amen. I'm talking about the local New Testament church, the one Jesus shed his blood for when he was on the cross of Calvary and got his side pierced. That's a picture of the church right there. You say, how do you get that, preacher? Eve come out of the side of Adam. Amen. The church come out of the side of Christ. He shed his blood for the church too. Amen. Oh, my. Are you hearing me? He called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hey, man, what's the purpose of the church? And he said unto them, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Notice it said creature. It didn't say a child. I hear all the time, oh, we're all just children of God. I said, you kind of got that right. You're created by God, but you don't become a child of God to get saved. Hey, man, that's why it says creature in there. John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus told them religious rulers their father was the devil because it wouldn't come to him. Hey, man, that they might have life. Are you hearing me tonight? Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. The church is where you get spiritually fed. And I heard that man of God preach many times, so I know you're getting fed good. I know he minds the Lord. I know he prays and reads the word. Hey, man, hey, you can't get it anywhere else. And when you miss that service, I'm not talking about sickness. I'm not talking about getting hurt or, or up in years and, and you just can't make it. I'm talking about when you just flat lay out. When you miss that service, you miss that preaching, you miss that fellowship that can never be reproduced that night. Hey, man, are you hearing me tonight? Verse 42, that early infant's church over there in Acts chapter 2. Let me give you a few things about that, and I'll move on. Peter preached that service. 3,000 souls got saved. Birth in the family of God. The New Testament church took off. Hey, man, it was made up of born-again individuals right there. Verse 41, hey man, verse 42, they were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. There's got to be doctrinal agreement among all the members. Amos said, can two walk together lest they be agreed. Hey man, verse 42, fellowship, the breaking of bread. You can't reproduce that on a computer. I'm not talking, hey, if, 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 that, if COVID hit out around here and that pastor wants to do the services online, hey, he's looking out for your safety. Don't beat him up. There's so many men of God right now out here in the land. Hey, we're outside again at my church. We got a bunch of members that's dealing with that stuff. We, oh, yeah, my wife and kids not here tonight. We just buried her aunt Tuesday. Hey, man, I've got another preacher friend of mine that just went to the hospital in Salisbury, and he, he's dealing with it. Hey, man, are you hearing me? The thing's real. Hey, it's not a hoax. Now, whether the government brought it on or government's, this or that. There's people around us that I know that's died. Hey, man. And if that man of God, God lays it on his heart to do something to keep y'all safe, hey, you ought to be glad. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, I don't know why I run that rabbit, but I'm glad I did. Hey, man. 
fellowship breaking the bread. But if we're not, if we're not dealing with COVID, hey man, he need to be here. He can't break bread and fellowship on a computer screen. Hey man. Verse 44, they were united in their beliefs. Verse 44, they had all things common. What that meant there was they had their they had more than they needed. Hey man. I'm talking about the basic necessities, food and clothes and raiment and things like that. I'm not talking God's blessed you with a big house or a big car or a motorcycle ride. Hey, man, he don't expect you to go find somebody who don't have one and give that to them. This was, this, was, this was things so they could live, so they could eat. Hey, man, so they had clothing, so they had something to keep them warm. That's what he was talking about right there, the basic necessities of life. People didn't let their possessions possess them. If they had extra, they helped somebody out. And I know y'all do that, Pastor Ken. Hey, man, verse 41 through 46, because of the activity of the early church, verse 47, they were praising God, having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily. Daily such should be saved. saved. Hey, man, let me give you four quick things, and I've got one more point. Listen to me. That same church right there, this, this is what people saw in that early church. Number one, they were concerned about one thing, Brother Ken, getting somebody else to Jesus. That was the consuming desire of their hearts. You wouldn't be here tonight on Sunday night if, if, if that wasn't a consuming desire in your hearts. You wouldn't have those missionaries up there if it wasn't a consuming desire in your hearts. And I praise the God for that, God of glory for that. Number two, they depended on one source of power. Jesus said over in Luke chapter 24, verses 46 through 49, he promised that he had that power for that. The coming of the Holy Ghost, hey man, is fulfilled in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. His powerful witness and all the way to the uttermost part of the earth. I see out there where you've got your missionaries. They're all over the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They had one message. They went everywhere preaching Jesus. Everywhere preaching Jesus. Hey man, Acts 5, 42, and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Hey man, they wasn't just preaching about Jesus, but preaching Jesus. Hey man, oh, and that's what we still need to do. What, what happened here in that early church? God's never said this word. You need to do it different. I know a lot of people get a lot of opinions in their head and they want to do this and do that, but if you'll mind God and line your church up like that early church, people will be getting saved. Hey, man, are you hearing me? Number four, Jesus. Jesus was real to them. John said we handled him with our hands. We ate with him. We saw him. We looked on him. And Jesus, when he becomes the greatest reality in your life, hey, I believe you'll come to church regularly. Because you'll want to meet with Jesus and you'll go home with something in your hearts because he'll preach something that God's given. Hey, man. And hey, he'll keep, send, keep sending those messages out about the cross because they work, folks. Hey, man. I believe this crowd. Hey, I believe this COVID. This COVID right here. And this is just my opinion. I believe God's trying to get the attention of the church. I do, as well as the lost. When I go in these facilities, sometimes it'll come out. You see, the fear of COVID in these prisons. COVID's run through prisons too. I got put out of a service I was preaching because one tested positive. Hey man, but you listen to me folks. The lost people, this is the opportunity now to let them know, what if you do get COVID? Where are you going to go? I believe there's a lot of people that got in that would never come to Christ. If this happened. I know of one story 100% true. When, they, when she got COVID, she, she got saved before she stepped out and turned it. I believe she really got in. I hate she waited that late. I hate she had to get it. But my pastor led her to the Lord, folks. Listen to me. But I believe for the church, God's trying to get people's attention too. If you won't come to my house only when you feel like it, or it fits your uh, uh, schedule, hey man, oh my, I'll fix it where you can't come. I believe he's trying to get the attention of the lost people and trying to see... Who, who, who his faithful people are. Number five, and I'll be done. Just give me what time is it. Oh, I'll have you out of here in five, ten minutes. Hey, man. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Folks, we need to get a vision of Jesus himself. We heard the songs tonight. We are to sing, sing with all our heart. We are to let our voices be heard through the congregation, folks, and not hold back. Even if you don't feel good, hey, man, we really should. We really should, folks. We need a vision of Jesus himself. Isaiah 43, 11. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there's no Savior. 
Oh my, verse 25, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Isaiah 45, 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he hath created it, not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Oh my, oh my, the Greeks, the Gentiles, Hey, they came to the disciples in John chapter 12, verse 21, and they said, Sir, I, oh, we would see Jesus. Oh, my. That should, ever be, that should be every John 3 born individual desire is to see Jesus. That should be a cry in their hearts, a desire in their hearts. Hey, man, hey, not see or have less of Jesus in your life, but have more of them. Hey, man, hey, you shouldn't be ashamed to share what you got. Hey, man. If somebody's ridiculing you, hey, we, Jesus said we're going to suffer persecution. Hey, to tell them you're his child anyway. Look them in the face and tell them that you love Jesus. How many of you tonight, when you go out of here and head to the restaurant or head to the gas station or head in to see somebody, how, how many of you just go look at somebody and say, you know what, what, I love Jesus? Not for what, hey, not for, not for me, but for who he is and what he did for me on the cross. Boy, that'd help our witness in the night if we'd let a little of that the pride out of our life, hey, man, and just let people know that we love Jesus. I seen Mama sign in the yard. Boy, that cranked my tractor up. I'm going to get me one of them tonight, too. Hey, man, I hope you got one. I want it in my yard, too. Hey, I don't give a flip about that racetrack. Only thing that racetrack done was produce drunks. They got out here on the road and harmed and hurt and maimed people. Hey, man, because, I, hey, I went to one race out there. back. Of, I can't remember what it was. It might have been when you moved out here. But I was lost as a ball in high weeds, and that's all I seen out there was a bunch of drunkards. Hey, man, I'm not saying they all were. Some probably wanted to go. But I'll tell you what, I take that verse of Scripture over in Thessalonians serious in my life, in my walk with the Lord. Abstain from all appearance of evil. A child of God to get a hold of that, that answer a whole lot of questions in your life. Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I do this or should I do that? Hey, I, pass, I encourage people, hey man, when they're living for Jesus, when they quit worrying about what the world thinks, I don't give a flip what the world thinks about me, but I will tell them about the Lord. I will tell them how much Jesus is to me and what he done for me. He'll do the same for you. He'll do the same for you. He died. He died to set you free from some debt that you cannot pay. Let me see if I got something else here in my notes. Hey, man. Oh, my. If we can see Jesus, I see Jesus and generally save people. There's people I know that live for him. I, they live for him better than I do. Yeah, I, I mess up at times. Old flesh rares up in me and I get mad and I have to go to that altar too. We go to the prison revival and a, revi and a, and a, and a fight breaks out and I drove six hours to get there and they cancel the service. That gets under my collar. But I know they can't do nothing about it. I don't fuss at the officials because I want to get back in. But the missionaries I'm with, I might give them a hard time. You know, hey man. But it's something we can't help. And that's why I ask you to pray that service tomorrow night makes that nothing hinders it. Hey, man, but we as God's children, hey, man, we need to see more of Jesus and less than us. Hey, man, hey, if Christ's people, if they really love the Lord, Hebrews 2, 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Hey, man, I'm going to give you three quick thoughts here to help your vision stay clear. Hey, man, Jesus should have number one preeminence in your life. Number one. Number two, priority in your life. And number three, number one position in your life. Oh, my. John 4, 23. But the, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God's looking for some true worshipers tonight, folks. He's tired of this phony stuff. He's tired of these backsliders and fence straddlers. Hey, man, we got any true worshipers in here tonight? I believe we do. Hey, man, or you wouldn't be supporting missionaries. You wouldn't be, hey, helping to get the gospel out to the lost nine world. I'm excited of what's going to happen, Brother Ken. Hey, God's, God don't run out of stuff, does he? I believe he's going to give you more in that faith promise this year. I believe you're going to get more missionaries. I believe, hey, whether you get more members or not, God's going to bless the ones that are giving. You can't outgive God. Hey, man, you can't outgive God. Boy, I remember many times, hey, God's got a hold of me. 
and I give what he told me to give, and before one, two, three days later, it come right back to me, folks. You try it sometime. You can't outgive them. God lays it on your heart to do something for somebody. Hey, if it's financial, if you say, oh, I don't think I can, but if you can, you do it, and you watch what God does. Hey, man, you are, if God tricks your heart to go up in your faith promise, let me tell you this. When, when I was doing faith promise, and when God pricked my heart, rendered my heart to go, go do this, I stepped out by faith at 13% with a family of four. And you know what? I ain't missed a meal. I ain't missed a bill. And my faith promise was that month. And this was before I knew I got the green light to go. And it went up. Went up, I believe it was five times. Then when he let me know to get off that secular work and go, I said, oh my. But you know what? It's been there. It was there every month. Now, he puts it there, and you choose to use different. You know, that's between you and God. But he will make it happen to get the gospel out. I've seen it so much, people. I love you, and I promise to get you out of here, and it's seven minutes after seven. You want to close the service, preacher? All right, if you'll stand to your feet. Hey.